welcome to Korea for Beginners. In today's class or video, we're going to be talking about all the things that you have to do when you go to Korea for the first time ever. It's like, can you even say you went to Korea if you didn't do these things? So let's get to it. Come on class. We're not going anywhere. We're literally just sitting down because standing is tiring. So like I mentioned before, today we're going to talk about all the things that you have to do when you go to Korea for the first time ever. For most visitors, if you go to Korea, you're going to be spending the majority of your time in Seoul. Sit down class, get your notepad out or your phone or whatever it is and start taking some notes. The first one that I'm going to mention is an iconic staple for anyone who is visiting Korea and that is to visit and Seoul Tower. That is what was formerly known as Namsan Tower and that is located right in the center of the city, right above Hangan. The most iconic thing to do when you're at the and Seoul Tower is get a log and then you can write your initials of you and your loved one. There's a bunch of railings along the tower for you to lock your lock on to you know, profess your love of eternity or whatever it is. But really, it is just a really, really great place to go to get a sweeping view of Seoul. There is a cable car that runs from Myeongdong, which is right at the base of Namsan. And then you can take that all the way up to the Ensel Tower. That is my recommended route to go to Myeongdong and then take that cable car up. And then you can walk your way back down through Namsan Park. While you are in that area, you might as well go visit Myeongdong, which is a great shopping district with a lot of different street foods that come out around 3 to 4 p.m. However, I do want to point out that the last time that I was there, which was a year ago, the stores in Myeongdong have dwindled a lot. So it is no longer like that busy shopping district that it used to be. So just be aware of that and have that in mind when you go visit. When I visited, there were a ton of shops that were like closed down and just empty and deserted. The next area that we're going to talk about is Jongno. And Jongno is going to be right above Myeongdong area, also very much in city center. And that is where you're going to find all of the palaces. The biggest palace that you should definitely visit while you are in Korea is Gyeongbokgung. And that is going to be right over here in the middle. And right in front of the palace is Gwanghwamun Square, which was recently renovated and has a ton of tourist attractions. I think there's even like an underground portion for you to go in. It's really, really cool. Even back before it was renovated, it was still a sight to see. So I can only imagine what it's like now that it's open to the public again. One thing that you don't want to miss while you're there is the guard change at the Gyeongbokgung palace and that is going to happen I think twice a day one in the morning and one in the afternoon another thing to note while you're visiting the palace is that entry is free if you wear a hanbok and that is also something that a lot of people like to do when they're in the area because in that same area not only is there a ton of palaces that surrounding neighborhood is also a hanok village so that's also another place that you would want to go is to bukshon hanok village which is right north of the palace while you are in that you know environment of tr like the traditional korean houses how beautiful would that be to be in a hanbok as well and um, also along that area is insadong there's a street of like shops cafes you definitely don't need to buy anything from there because it is going to be a little bit pricier but they do have a lot of traditional souvenirs available for you to peruse after you're done wandering around the Hanuk village and Insadong, I would definitely recommend that you also head over to Iksondon, which is going to be a little bit further east, further east from the palace. Iksondon is hopping with cafes and restaurants. Whether you are stopping there after a walk around Bukchon Hanuk village and you want just to get a tea, they have a lot of traditional tea houses in that area, which is a really great cultural experience and a way to you know, enjoy the traditional Korean culture. Or they have a lot of restaurants as well. If you end up there at night, it is usually bustling with people. Aside from the palaces and the Hanok village, that area is actually pretty, like, it's kind of like a financial district. So there's a lot of tall buildings and there's really not that many people around at night. 
but a lot of people do love to go for a stroll along Cheonggyecheon Stream. Even during the day, it is a beautiful walk, but at night there are lights lit up. It's really, really romantic feeling. It's a nice escape from the hustle and bustle of the city, even though it is really, literally dead center in the city. The next place that you would want to visit in Seoul is DDP. So that's going to be a little bit further out. It's going to be like around this area right here. DDP stands for the Dongnaemun Design Plaza. So it's right next to Dongnaemun, which is a really big shopping district. So if you're looking for cheap clothes or whatever, that's a really great place to go shopping. But the Dongnaemun Plaza holds a lot of different exhibits. Even if you don't go for the exhibits themselves, the building is beautiful. It's a very iconic landmark that you definitely want to check out while you are in Seoul. So we talked a lot about this area right here above Hangan. And then so now we're going to move on to Hongdae, which is one of my favorite areas. And that's going to be right over here. It's a little bit further west. Hongdae is the area next to Hongik University. And in that area, there's two other really prominent universities, Yonsei and Ihua. There's a lot of college students in that area, which is why the area is so lively all the time. So that area is known for, you know, having a lot of underground art and music scenes. That is also one of the reasons why I love visiting Yohongdae, especially at nighttime, because that's where you're going to find like all the busking um, and people performing in public. It's just a, it's a very different kind of energy that you won't really find elsewhere. Plus, there's a ton of good food for relatively cheap because these are all university students we're talking about here. They're not making lots of money. Another great thing about the Hongdae area is the amount of cafes available and not just regular cafes. We're talking like themed cafes. I had posted a vlog when I was in Korea about the themed cafes in Hongdae and I would definitely highly and 100% recommend going to at least one of them. Um, just to name off a few that I had visited, there's the Meerkat Cafe which Oh my god, you have to go to. There's so many different animal cafes, but the meerkat one was one of my favorites because it not only had raccoons, wallabies, meerkats, of course, there was also like an arctic fox in there. There's also like a purely raccoon cafe, there's like a sheep cafe, um, and then there's cat cafes. There's so many different animal cafes. There's also the very, very famously Instagrammable uh, Stalnanda Pink Pool Cafe. So that's Hongdae area right over here. And then next we're going to talk about Gangnam because all of this time we've been north of the Han River. Um, and Gangnam, there's a few areas that you would want to kind of go see. And one is Karasugi and Akucho, and that's going to be more of your posh and luxurious area. That's where you're going to find all of the flagships for the high end brands. Not only a great area to go shopping for luxury items, it's also a great area for like bougie brunch. If you want something a little bit more affordable, I would recommend going to the Gotu Mall, which is going to be at the um, Seoul Express bus terminal over here, or Gangnam Station, which is I think somewhere along over here. They have these underground shopping malls where the clothes are so cheap. They'll be very repetitive from stand to stand, but that's because they buy them in like bulk, but so cheap. Oh my god, so totally worth it. Something I forgot to mention about Hongdae as well is because it's like an artistic district, the clothes and shopping that you'll find there is going to be very different from anywhere else in Seoul. The style there is very diverse um, and that's where you're going to find a lot of different kinds of clothing as well. And then the next place is a place that you definitely do not want to miss when you are in Seoul and that is Coex Mall. It's not only is it like a huge mall, the one thing that you really, really want to go see when you go there is the Starfield Library. And that is located somewhere around here. So that is another iconic, you know, Instagrammable space that you definitely have to visit. Because if you didn't, how can you even say that you went to Seoul, you know? Something else that you have to do when you're in Seoul is to visit the Han River. And whether that is, you know, going on the subway, going across the Han River, or going to one of the parks along the river to just chill, it is a beautiful place to go to, to like watch the sunset or, you know, even go at nighttime to see the city skyline. It's kind of like going to the Cheonggyecheon stream. It's like that escape from the busy city life. And there are a few places that you can do that along the Han River. One of them is going to be at Yoido Park. There's a 
Park by Hongdae as well. And then there's also the Banpo Park, which um, is also very special because it's right next to the Banpo Bridge, which for half the year, it had there's like a rainbow fountain show off the bridge. So that's also something that not just foreigners and tourists go to see, but a lot of locals also go out to, you know, see the bridge. And then you can also ride your bike along the, the park and along the river. It's just, like I said, a really nice escape from the city. So we talked a lot about the things that you have to do when you're in Korea, but let's be real. Half the reason why people go to Korea is for the food. And if that's not the reason for you visiting, that's fine. But that doesn't mean that you need to go without good food, you know? So the next few things we're going to talk about are actually going to be food centric um, and we're going to talk about all the foods that you have to try when you're in Korea. I have made this a very short list. If you are interested in learning more about Korean foods um, and what there is there that's different from Korean restaurants maybe back in the US and stuff like that, feel free to comment down below and let me know and I will make a whole separate video about the food because there's just that much to talk about. So a few things that you definitely have to try when you're in Korea, first and foremost, Korean barbecue. It's not like it's any different from Korean barbecue in the US. Uh, the only things I would say are really, really different is the side dishes that are offered. They're just much more extensive in Korea. You can't go into these barbecue places thinking that it's going to be like off the charts delicious because Korean barbecue, like any other barbecue, is going to be heavily reliant on the meat quality, right? So if you go to a really high-end Korean barbecue place, it might be really really good and even better than the ones in America but it also be very expensive. My take on Korean barbecue in Korea is that it's more for the atmosphere. You go to Korean barbecue to have fun with your friends, to eat in large groups and you know you go for the vibe. A quick note on that is pork is always going to be cheaper than beef and pork is super duper cheap in Korea. The next thing that I would recommend is eating bunshik or street foods and bunshik literally means like food made of flour so it's going to be fairly inexpensive and that will include like your kimbap, your tteokbokki, uh, omuk and all of that which is also very commonly found in street food stands. I say this is a classic because you know, this is what a lot of Korean restaurants serve in the US and it's just a very different vibe of eating it on the street and it's a great way to have an inexpensive but really delicious meal. And I talk a lot more about what, you know, bunshi and traditional street foods consist of in my other videos so be sure to check that out as well. And speaking of street food, there are a few traditional markets that you should definitely go check out while you are in Seoul. And one of them is the Gongjang Market, which is going to be your biggest market. It is a little bit overwhelming, I will have to say. So finding the right stall to eat, you definitely have to search through like Naver um, to try to find the right stall number to go to because there are so many stalls serving the same types of food. The way that I go about picking stalls to eat at is I go to the one with the most people. <laughs> because if people are waiting in line, it must be good for a reason. And another one that I would recommend is Tonging Market. It is going to be on the west side of Gyeongbokgun. And then there's also Mangwon Market in Hongdae area and Mapo. It's a more neighborly kind of vibe, but also has a ton of great, great food. Another one that you can also go to is Moon Market. It's more known for you know, having a ton of random stuff to buy, like small trinkets or socks or bags, whatever, what have you. But they do also have a food street in Namdae Moon Market that serves a lot of different like Korean home foods in a way. Like I had sujebi there um, and then they also had kaguksu. So those are just a few of those markets that you can go to to get a taste of that traditional street food. The next thing that I would recommend you try in Korea, if you haven't had it already, is Korean fried chicken. There is a reason why it is in its own category. They just know how to do fried chicken somehow. I don't know. The way that it's like, it's like super crispy, but not oily. I don't know what it is, but it's delicious. There's a ton of chains around Korea for you to try out. Most of them are pretty comparable, to be honest, but it's very 
you know, up to your personal preference. Next food that I would recommend people to try if this is your first time ever visiting Korea is bingsu, and that is shaved ice. Let me tell you, Korea takes food to the next level. It's like extravagant shaved ice, okay? You have shaved ice in a whole half melon with like melon balls all over it. There's different flavors of it. I personally like to go for the traditional flavors. So I really enjoy injolmi, which is bean powder. And that's something that you really can't get anywhere else. It makes it very different and, tra and like uniquely Korean. And the next food that I would recommend that is also pretty uniquely Korean, but you wouldn't really think of it is to go to the fast food restaurants. What? I know, you're like, I'm going to go to Korea to go eat fast food. And I'm telling you, if you are from America, you don't realize that fast food restaurants in other countries are so much better. Like seriously, McDonald's and like KFC, they have so much on their menu in other countries. In Korea, I was able to get a bulgogi hamburger at McDonald's and it was really good. Their special at the moment when I was there was like a spicy shrimp patty burger. Um, they had churros as desserts. It's just crazy. All right, so those are my top items that you have to do when you're in Korea because if you didn't do these, can you even say that you went to Korea? Mm -hmm. But as a bonus to you today, I'm going to give you some seasonal tips as well because right now we are in the prime of fall and Korea is a place that has all four seasons and it is beautiful during the fall time. And this is for the time period from like October all the way through mid-November, I would say. Like if you are visiting right now when this video uploads like mid-October, you might still be able to catch the Cosmos Flowers and Seoul Olympic Park. It is going to be a little bit further out. Seoul Olympic Park is going to be like all the way over here, which is a little bit further from all of your activities. Another place is Pink Muli, which is actually an invasive plant in Korea, but it's everywhere because people love it. But it's beautiful. And you can find that at Hanil Park, which is going to be somewhere over here. You also can go to Seoul Forest Park to look at the fall foliage. Another place to go for fall foliage is actually Cheongdokgung. Um, there's a secret garden behind the palace that is an extra fee to take the tour, but it is so worth it because it is so beautiful. The other place that you can visit when you are visiting in the fall is Nami Island, which is a little bit on the outskirts of Seoul, so it would be more of like a half day trip or day trip, but it is really, really worth it because it's really, really beautiful there as well. Um, a lot of dramas also take place there. So having seen all of these iconic places on the map, this is why a lot of people tend to recommend staying along Myeongdong area because it is in the city center, um, making it very accessible to all of these different activities that a lot of the tourists and travel groups recommend that you do when it's your first time visiting Seoul. I also do recommend a lot of those same things, of course, but because of what I said earlier, like Myeongdong is really not as lively as it used to be. Even when it was very lively, I thought it was like a little bit too commercial in a way. So I didn't really enjoy staying in that area. I always prefer staying in the Hongdae area because of that like different type of lively atmosphere because it was more people just hanging out. And I loved like the nightlife there of people busking all the time and performing in public. It was just something really fun for me to watch and be a part of. Another area that I would highly recommend for your first time visiting Seoul is actually in Jongno itself. So Jongno is going to be just a little bit above Myeongdong. Like I mentioned earlier, it's not quite as lively at night because a big part of that area is going to be business buildings, but if you are near like the Iksondon area, there's a ton of areas for food. And so that's really how I base my way of like where I want to stay is because you just never know when you are eating when you're traveling. So having food readily available to you at any hour of the day was really, really important to me. So that's kind of why I gravitated towards Hongdae area um, and also why I really enjoyed Chongno because there was just food everywhere. I know that a lot of these aren't new ideas or new recommendations, but I hope that at least by seeing these places directed on a map gives you a better idea of where things are and kind of 
where you should be staying based off of the activities that you want to do. So I hope that that was helpful for you, but if you still have any questions, make sure you raise your hand before the class is over. And by raising your hand, I mean leave a comment down below. <laughs> Otherwise, class dismissed! Bye! It was so hard to pick what the top things were because honestly, there's so much. So don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell for part two of this series. Until then, see you next week. Bye!